GED students. So a student in the Facebook group I admin, which if you don't belong to is a great group, by the way, GED, we study and help each other is what it's called. Anyway, there was a student, Jessica, in there who was taking a look at this problem, which is from one of my videos in the crash course. It's from the Evaluating Expressions virtual class video. But the problem that she was having was the answer that she was getting when she did it on paper was not matching the answer when she did it in her calculator. And turns out it was actually the one that she was doing in her calculator that was wrong. Not because the calculator's broken, don't worry, but just because probably she wasn't sure how to plug these into her calculator. So we are going to do this sucker today two different ways in a TI. The first way I prefer, I'm going to teach it to you because you need this skill for college, uh, but the second way is like such a cheater way. It's really easy, so you might want to stick around for that too. So let's go ahead and look at it. The problem said, evaluate the following expression for x is equal to negative 2 and y is equal to negative 3. And we need to know here what they mean when they tell us to evaluate. When they tell us to evaluate, basically what they're saying is, we're going to be able to do this math. We're going to be able to simplify here because we know what our x and our y's are. They're not mysteries anymore. I would highly recommend that if you are college bound, you practice this first skill of substitution. And basically substitution is this idea that we can trade out things that are equivalent in math, you always can trade out things that are equivalent. So we can see that x is equivalent or equal to negative 2, which means I can trade it out. I can substitute it. Every time I see an x, I can replace it with negative 2. And then same thing with y. I know what y is equal to, so I can substitute that into my expression. So that'll be the first thing I do. So uh, obviously numbers aren't going to change, but everywhere I once saw x's, I am going to plug in negative 2s. Now notice, it is super important when substituting in negative values that you use parentheses. So my x's are negative two and my y's are negative three. Now be really careful to close that parentheses before you put the square. You will actually get a wrong answer if you don't. <laughs> so the square does not go inside the parentheses, it goes outside. And why is because I'm saying I'm gonna square that entire number, the negative three, the negative and the three together. And then from that, it says subtract two, and then I can see that x squared shoved up against there. So again, it's shoved up, it's multiplying. I'll put it in parentheses. So the x was negative two. And then super duper important again that that square goes outside the parentheses. And then my y there is negative three. Again, shoved up against, so this is multiplying. Now, once you've done the substitution step, feel free to pick up your calculator, whether you're in a college class or you're on the GED, you'll have a calculator after doing this. So if I were to plug this into my TI calculator and take a look over here on the right hand side of my screen, we would go three and I'm going to plug it in exactly the way I see it. So that's one problem students will do. They'll use time signs instead of parentheses. And as it turns out, Time signs and parentheses are similar, but not exactly the same. So important to use those parentheses. They are able to group as well as multiply. So parentheses negative two, parentheses negative three, and then make sure you close that parentheses again before hitting x squared. And now, careful. Do you see how this minus sign is between these two numbers? It's not, we're not multiplying by negative two here, we're subtracting two. Make sure you use the subtract button up above plus. So minus two times negative two, close parentheses again before you square, and then times negative three, close parentheses, and I press enter, and I can see I do get negative 30. And that is what I always say is the least work you can get away with, especially in a college class. I would need to see your beautiful substitution and then I'd need to see your solution. I just said that's the least work you can get away with in a college class, but it must be admitted that there's actually an even easier way to do this on the calculator. So I will show it to you um, just because so many students make those mistakes with those parentheses and with those exponents on the outside of the parentheses instead of the inside of the parentheses. So let me just show you another cool way to go here. 
as it turns out, you can literally program values into your TI so that you don't even have to do the substitution step here. So what we're going to do is we're going to store these numbers into our calculator as X and Y values. Here's how you do it. If I want to store negative 2 in my calculator as my calculator's X value, first I'll type negative 2. And then I'm going to hit the store button. The store button's over here on the bottom left says STO with a little arrow. I hit that and I want to store it as my X variable. So right above the store button is your variable button. Store it as your X variable. Enter that and that will be stored into your calculator. Now every time you type X, it thinks negative two. Let's do the same thing with our Y. We're gonna take negative three. We're gonna store it as a Y. Now it's the same button you use for any variable. You just push it more and more times to go through the letters. So if I want Y, I'm gonna have to push it twice. And there it is. I'm gonna store negative three as Y, press enter. All right, now that I have those variables stored, I don't have to do the substitution. The calculator will do the substitution for me. All I have to do is type in this expression with the X's and Y's. Now be careful, this only works for evaluating expressions. If I didn't know what X and Y were, my calculator would try to plug in the last known X's and Y and give me some kind of nonsense, okay? But this works because I know what X and Y are. So let's go ahead and type it. So three, and then I want an X, I'm gonna type X. Now, don't keep going, because look, it'll just change your X. So make sure you have your X there, and then you're actually gonna press right arrow. So now you can hit it the second time to get your Y, and then square, okay? I use that little X squared button to get square. And then again, make sure you subtract two, and now this time it's X uh, squared, and I won't need the arrow since I have the square hit it twice for Y, press enter, and look at that. Woohoo! even simpler, negative 30. So whether you substitute yourself and handle the order of operations yourself, or whether you substitute yourself and then plug the expression into your calculator, or whether you program the values into your calculator and have it do the substitution for you, you should get the same answer, negative 30 all around. All right, if you have any questions about this or any other GED math topic, be sure to drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it. I just can't stress enough how important practice is to learning math. So don't just stop here at watching a video. Head on over to my website, the GED Math Crash Course. Link is down there in the video description. And get your practice on, check your answers, make sure you're ready and prepared come test day. And I just want to thank everybody who supports this ministry of helping students who've long struggled be able to finally get their GEDs and pass this test. It really is making a difference. And so thank you to those who support me on Patreon. Thank you to those of you who've bought me a coffee. And if you want to be able to do that, I've got the URLs up here on the screen and just from the bottom of my heart, I so appreciate you supporting the work that we're doing. Happy learning.